Sean says I've only got 10 minutes, but don't worry, I'm a GP, you can only have 10 minutes. And, uh, and one problem, and the problem I want to address is a big problem, and it concerns health literacy. Um, what is that? Um, there's lots of definitions uh, about uh, health literacy, and the definitions are changing all the time. Um, but what I want to do is to use, I think, these definitions with no disrespect to the definitions and the creators of these definitions. I think the, the definitions, as my teenage son would say, suck, um, which has, stands for the skills, understanding, the confidence and the knowledge that people need to be able to participate in their health care. And why is that important is that we know if people can be engaged and participate in their health care and their own well-being and can be seen as the lead and active agent in the driving seat of their care, um, everything improves. Their medical outcomes, their personal outcomes, health service utilisation, uh, costs improve, and health care is importantly more safe and effective. But the problem is that the complex demands and expectations of modern healthcare often exceed people's abilities. Um, and here's a reminder that one of the key things that um, we have in addressing and helping people to understand is the precious time that we have with people when we're face to face having conversations with them. And all up and down the country, in GP surgeries, in outpatient appointments, um, on the wards, we're having conversations with people. But it's safe to say that these are really, really ineffective because of half of what a person is told is forgotten and half of what they remember is misunderstood. So it's hugely unproductive. And uh, it would be a great way to see if we can uh, improve that productivity. And it's actually two-way because... Um, most of our patients feel that um, we don't remember what they say and we misunderstand what they say, so it's absolutely two-way. Um, my light bulb moment in all this was um, a few years ago. This is Ray, who is um, the IT technician that comes along to our practice when we have a glitch or needing a software upgrade on our computer. And Sometimes I, I come in from my home visits back into the surgery and find Ray sitting at my desk. And um, what, what, what happened one day was I took a seat uh, in the patient's seat and there was Ray sitting in my chair, the chair of authority. And I said to Ray, I said, Doc, come on, tell me, how is it? How's my computer? And then he began to tell me um, and I have no computer literacy. I have a lot of health literacy, but I have no computer literacy. And he began to tell me exactly what was wrong, what he had done. And it was all jargon, technical language. It was gobbledygook or mints, really. And um, I didn't understand a word. But the, here's the strange thing, is I sat there, and I looked really sort of quite serious, and I sort of nodded every time he said something. And I, I pretended I was understanding. Um, and I did so because there's this kind of social convention that we want to be polite and we don't want to, um, you know, say that we don't understand. And, um, and also, I was kind of too ashamed to, to admit that I didn't understand a word he was speaking. And then I thought, oh my gosh, actually that's not what my teenage son, son would say. I said, oh my gosh, um, this is exactly what it feels like for my, for my patients. And probably even worse, because um, they're perhaps stressed, frightened, um, they may not speak the same language as me, they may, have, uh, they may be deaf, they may be 10 years older than me, and we have even greater difficulty of taking in new concepts. And I think the old man, the national treasure, George Bernard Shaw, summed it up beautifully when he said the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it's taken place. And there are numerous things that we can do to, to try and address this problem and make these conversations more efficient. We can prepare people before their conversations, lots we can do during the conversation, and a lot we can do after the conversation. And really, um, this, 
this particular issue of improving communication, improving people's confidence, understanding, knowledge and skills is really a goldmine for improvement and, in, and innovation. But because it's a hidden problem, because people actively hide their lack of understanding, and because you just can't tell if someone is understood by looking at them or indeed asking them, we actually have to check their understanding. And we can do this by a mechanism that we call teach back. And the idea of teach back is that what I do is I put the spotlight on myself. I often say, look, I, I I'm, I'm really um, struggle sometimes to make myself clear. I wonder if you could just tell me what you've understood. Uh, we don't want to shame the person. And, or I might say, you know, we, we've discussed a lot today. There's a lot to take in. Would you mind just um, telling me what you might go home and tell your partner? And um, what I want to do is, is, is give you a little um, an example of this in practice. Does anybody watch um, the TV series House? Hands up who's seen House. Great. Dr. Gregory House, um, played by our other national treasure, Hugh Laurie. Um, is a very unperson-centered, very disease-orientated, rather grumpy physician. And I just want to uh, play this clip for you. Well, sometimes doctors make mistakes. Anna, you need to try twice as hard to fix them. Are you using your inhaler? All the time. Go through one a week. You sure you're using it right? Do I look like an idiot? No. Nope. Why don't you show me how your inhaler works? Chuck. Yeah, any intervention does have side effects. Um, the, beware the, 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 the confidently incompetent person. But the key point I really want to make about this slide is that if the clinician who first prescribed that inhaler had checked the person's understanding, then um, it would have improved the quality of life for that person, less emergency room attendances. She wouldn't have been able, having to go through an inhaler once a week. Can we imply improvement methodology to teach back? Um, this is an example. Anybody here from Wishaw General, Lanarkshire? Um, this was... Um, uh, some work by Julie Adams, who was an improvement advisor with uh, the patient safety program. And they looked at, the, the problem they had was that children were being admitted to the ward with exacerbations of their asthma, and they didn't have much confidence or understanding or knowledge about a multi-dose inhaler technique, which is to um, help you self-manage at home, uh, and often saves people hospital admission. And so what they did was they did PDSA cycles, um, the far left there, to um, embed an education program so that all the staff were being uh, receiving instruction how to use teach back. And they did run charts, weekly run charts, to show that almost all the staff were getting that training except the night staff. And then um, they did a further run charts where they taught the children and their parents um, how to use their inhalers with this multi-dosing technique and then got the children and the parents to teach back exactly what they had heard and what they understood and it gave them great feedback about their own communication skills. Um, sometimes uh, they weren't communicating things very well and they had to change uh, but more importantly sometimes most often the children and parents absolutely got it but they explained it back in fantastically plain English. But also, there were people that didn't get it, and it helped them to understand and um, improve their confidence once they'd had a chance to, to teach back. And when these children returned to the outpatient departments for follow-up, um, they all had much better confidence, understanding, knowledge, and skills about how to use their inhalers. And it'd be really interesting to see if this translates into reduced hospital admissions. So when to use teach back, um, really importantly at transitions of care, I think, particularly when people are, be, are being discharged, it would be really useful to ask every person uh, when they leave hospital um, to tell you what they think has happened to them while they've been in hospital. Um, really important in consent, how can you give informed consent if you haven't really understood what you're consenting for? 
any new medication changes or starting new medication would be really, really important. And any introducing any new concepts and instruction. And I think we all ought to use it with our teenage children as well. Um, it really, really is effective. Yes, I've got to peel the potatoes, tidy my room, and put the washing online. So really, to summarize, it improves two-way communication. Teach back improves effectiveness. It improves patient safety improves people's health literacy and addresses health inequalities because the people who are most likely to stand uh, to, to, to get the most benefit from this are the people who haven't understood. Um, I just want to highlight that we are, um, it's been an absolute pleasure working in Scottish Government alongside some wonderful um, can-do people like Tim Warren, Joanna Swanson, Mari McPherson. And it's been a real privilege being able to step out of practice and meet with um, some real pioneers of health literacy around the country, Kate Burton from NHS Lothian, uh, Phyllis Easton from NHS Tayside, to name but just two. And um, we've developed um, a call for action to um, help people uh, with their, enable people to have more confidence, understanding, knowledge, and skills. And uh, we've come up with a ambition uh, that we want Scotland to be a health richer society which enables all of us to have sufficient confidence, knowledge, understanding and skills uh, to live well on our own terms and with any health condition we may have. And uh, this, as Craig said, will be um, launched next week at the NHS event. Uh, it's full of some recommended actions and um, some really useful uh, interventions which I think will suit themselves to uh, the improvement collaborative approach. Thanks very much.